What's going on, guys? <clears throat> well, today's video is going to be in my opinion pretty fun. I think it's going to be probably a little bit of a divisive video as well. But before we get to that, let's talk about what we've got here. So over the years I've accumulated a lot of body parts as I've restored figures, made custom figures, etc, etc. And a few years back I bought a lot of talking mechanisms that were purportedly damaged by the seller. Um, he said they were none of them worked, so I bought them all, cleaned a bunch of them up, fixed as many as I could, used a few to improve talking mechanisms on figures I already had, and sold the rest. And I also kept a couple for later projects, one being this talking marine mechanism. Now I have a talking sailor, a talking soldier, and a talking pilot, but I don't have a talking marine. And I decided to keep that to restore a figure at a later date for a video. Now the caveat to all this is this is just going to be done with spare parts that I have. So they're not in great shape, but that's okay. Um, some's going to be vent some of the parts are going to be vintage. Some of the parts are going to be reproductions from Cotswold. Now I understand a lot of guys out there are like unless it's 100% vintage you know, the video is going to be trash. They're not going to like it. They're going to probably dislike it and probably throw some comments on there just from what I used to see on Facebook with a lot of people. And I get it. A lot of people are, you know, a lot of you collectors out there are staunch, has to be 100% Hasbro, blah, 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 blah. Well, this is not going to be the case today. So if you're not interested in this kind of video restoration, go ahead and hit the dislike button and shut this thing off because today we're going to restore this figure with some vintage and some Cotswold replacement parts. And the reason I'm doing this video is to show a lot of people out there who aren't interested in spending a lot of time on eBay paying uh, high prices for restoration parts. You can get the parts from Cotswold and just do a restoration for your own collection and make your own figure. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So this guy right here, I have a vintage chest cavity that I cleaned up. It had marker all over it. I cleaned it up the best as I could. Uh, we got the vintage blonde head. We got the two vintage hip ball joints. We got uh, some vintage legs and feet. And the rest is going to be, of course, the vintage talking box. The rest is going to be Cotswold products. So I've got some reproduction shoulder joints. Two arms with Kung Fu grip hands. <clears throat> Couple thighs. Reproduction speaker. Brand new string. So, that's what we've got going on. I know it's not ideal, but this is going to be for my collection. And that's kind of the whole point of this is just to show you guys that we can, you can restore whatever you want. I know there's a lot of people that buy a lot of Cotswold parts to restore their figures at home. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to pause the video and come back and talk about the first steps we're going to take to bring this talking marine back to life. All right, guys. So welcome back. Before we get started on this marine restoration or talking marine restoration, let's go over a few things. So... First and foremost, all of our vintage parts. So these are all, like I said earlier, a hodgepodge of parts that I've had lying around for a long time now, and I just wanted to do something with them because I'm really not trying to buy any more G.I. Joe figures. Uh, in the past, I've been getting lots of old vintage Joes and kind of restoring them. Kind of don't really want to do that anymore because I have too many to begin with. So. I have quite a bit of body parts just lying around, so I wanted to get this guy back in the fight. 
So I got two vintage calves or lower legs, feet. It's kind of a Frankenstein, so these are all from different years. I've got the two hip ball joints. Got, of course, his head. Just a standard hard head on an old uh, talking neck post. And the lower body, again, it's got some marker damage, but I'm not really going to worry about that too much. And, of course, the talking torso, which I've cleaned up as best I could. It had a lot of marker on it, so I used a little bit of uh, solvent to take it off. Kind of roughed the plastic up a little bit. Probably didn't use the right stuff, but that's okay. This figure's my, I guess, Frankenstein Marine to begin with. I think Marines out there will appreciate that. So, those are all the vintage parts we put off to the side. Of course, and also the talking mechanism, which we'll talk about later on. So, then we have our... Oh, one more thing. So, I wanted to use this upper vintage arm, but of course it has this crack. Now, if you guys have ever dealt with... <clears throat> excuse me, uh, G.I. Joe vintage items that have these cracks. It's very difficult to use them over time. The cracks propagate. The plastics, I've never found a glue that works really well in this plastic at all. So um, I could have taken the rivet out and used this portion for my new arms, but I just said the heck with it and uh, decided to just discard this. So I went and bought new arms. So the first thing we'll do, well, we'll, let's talk about the new parts I got too. So I got brand new arms from Cotswold Collectible. Got a brand new talking pull rope or string. Brand new speaker, which these things are pricey, by the way. For what this is, it's like 11 or 12 bucks. Kind of ridiculous, but that's okay. And I got some new thighs. And of course, a lower body restring kit. I also didn't have the screws for the torso, so I just dug out some screws in my spare scrap screw pile. These work great. So, And I also have a set of reproduction talking mechanism shoulder adapters. So let's put all that off to the side. First thing we're going to want to do is how I'm, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to drill out the head of this rivet with a 3 16th inch drill bit. So I'll drill that, I'll drill the smashed out portion, then I'll just punch that rivet through, and then we'll insert a new piece in there for the shoulders. Now here's the, here's the downside of this. So I've went, I went ahead and did one here to show you guys. So the rivet is, it can't be smashed again, but it's so tight in here that it works pretty well, so I'm not going to worry about it. I could buy new shoulder rivets, but um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It's my figure. But here's another issue. So on these newer Cotswold figures, they have this rough portion. So it creates a lot of friction between the brand new shoulder adapter and the ball. I might use a little bit of light sandpaper to kind of sand that up a little bit, like so. Just kind of smooth that out, I guess. Or you could probably put a little bit of oil in there if you wanted to. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just something I kind of discovered by doing this. So, yeah, so the first step will be to drill this rivet out, pop it through, and then attach our new shoulder adapters like I did right here. So when we get this baby all finished up, let's go ahead and put them in there like so. Actually, it works pretty good. I probably won't even mess with sanding that ball joint now that I've actually put one in here and tried it. So these, of course, are Kung Fu Grip reproduction arms. Um, if 
you're a hard hands guy, I have some old hard hands, uh, re or vintage hard hands I could insert back in here. But for this guy, who knows? Maybe we'll leave him like this. We'll just see what happens. This is, like I said, a Frankenstein style restoration. So it's not going to be completely vintage. So all you guys who are vintage freaks, sorry about this. I know it will probably upset you, but there's worse things to be upset about. Another thing you have to be really careful when doing the drill out portion. So go slow. Don't go uh, don't go balls deep right off the bat and just hollow out your plastic and screw it up. You got to just do it slow until you just get that enough to where you can get it out of there. Um, it's I hate to say this, but it's a trial and error process. So you don't you might want to practice on some. Uh, you might want to practice on some um, other guys or whatever. So, anyways, that's what we got going on. We'll come back. All right, guys, welcome back. So, you can see I'm just starting to drill out this rivet. It's just a real. slow process. You get that rivet drilled out. This here, this flaky portion that you see there, that'll come right out. So if we get a, uh, there goes all my punches. Let's just drop all those goddamn things on the ground. All right. <laughs> so you can see I can get this punch here. I just pop the rivet out. No harm, no foul. Um, so there's our rivet. Obviously, we're going to reuse it. But you can see little to no damage to the, to the shoulder mechanism or shoulder portion. Then it's just a matter of putting this new shoulder piece in there and kind of taking this punch and lining it up you want to make sure the holes lined up because one of the issues with putting these rivets back in if you don't have the holes lined up correctly and you start trying to ram that through there you're going to damage this hole and it's not going to work correctly and it's going to be loose so go ahead sometimes i like to take a, in this case i won't have to but i take a file Kind of file up the end of this, but I think it's going to go back in there pretty, pretty well. So let's try it and see here. Nope. We'll probably have to come and file it up. Let's try one more time here. So, like I said, it's hard. You got to get this hole lined up really well. Yeah. I'll have to file that down a little bit. Let's grab our file here. So I just have a standard file and I just file that up. I mean this isn't an this is not what I would consider to be an ideal way to do this. But the reason I'm doing this this way is because <clears throat> I don't want to order new parts. I don't want to order more rivets. I don't want to mess with any of that crap. Because it's the worst part about it is with um, like with Cotswold. And this is no, this is nothing against Cotswold because you know they're doing they're doing the best they can. Um, but the problem is is the shipping. So. Um, I know that I'm 
do this real quick. There we go. So I knocked it through. You can see the rivet back here. That's done pretty clean. I could probably um, knock this in a little more with a punch. And I could probably smash that portion out right here, but um, I think it's fine. So there's the shoulders are complete are, the, are finished up now for this guy. So back to what I was saying about Cotswold, their shipping's you know pretty standard. So the only sh you, you got to buy like a certain amount of product for them to ship. So and I'm not interested in buying like twenty five dollars worth of stuff right now. So that's kind of. That's kind of the deal, and that's okay because I don't mind that they do that because when I usually order from them, it's it's because I place a pretty big order for a lot of stuff that I need, so that's cool. So this is actually done. Now the arms are complete and in the body. It's pretty rad, huh? So our Marine has a torso, and he's ready to go so we'll set him off to the side there now really i mean this is a pretty simple restoration obviously so the next um step's going to be to when we come back is to do these thighs i and i hate these um i hate doing the rivets for these to be honest with you it's just not something i enjoy it's when you go to smash these rivets out to set them, they usually end up bending in here. I haven't really found a great way to do it. I might have a, a new tool now that I'm going to use that might work well. We'll try it here when I come back, but we'll get the thighs. Um, we'll get the thighs put back together and we'll try that. It's one of those weird things. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out when we come back, and uh, we shall keep moving along with this marine restoration. Uh, okay, guys, welcome back. So, I got the thighs all assembled, or lower body. So, a couple things. Um, first off, when you're doing this, you can see the Cotswold lower body restring kit. So a couple of things, a couple uh, things of note that I screw up a lot when I do this type of stuff. A, make sure that you have the right left and right legs. That's important. So, I don't know, they have markings on them usually, but double check. And then work your way from one thigh to the other. So I go ahead and thread the rivet through the thigh. You can see I've, I've got to smash this rivet at some point, but I'll go ahead and assemble the figure before I do that. And then work all the way up through to the other side. And then thread it back down through the other thigh, the left thigh. And then so when you go and you put that tension on this figure here, you know, it'll snap in there and fasten to that torso well. So definitely be aware of what right and left thighs are when you do this. Um, so when I restring GI Joes, like I take existing ones that have the rivets still in the thighs, what I will do is I'll take a small zip tie and I will zip tie the rivet and zip tie the eyelet together. So I don't have to cut anything out of the thighs and redo them. And it actually, it actually provides a really good tension. So there's no loss of tension in the body, so it works tight. So that's what I usually do in a lot of this stuff. But since these are brand new thighs and the rivet, rivets are uh, new, i got to insert them and, and smash them. The hardest part is holding them on the ground here or holding them on an on anvil and doing that. I usually use a nail punch, but I know that I have a rivet tool somewhere that I can smash it out with. But I almost feel like the head's too large to um, fit in this small indention here where the rivet is so I'll figure that all out at a later time when we get marching through this video but it's the lower legs assembled ready to go so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and 
pause the video and we'll come back and we'll talk about this talking mechanism and how we're going to restring it. Okay guys, welcome back. So talking mechanism time. So first thing we gotta do is change out the screen or the string. Ugh. So I like to just pull this thing all the way back on the old string until I find that hole there. Go a little farther back and then I have this clay tool. It's a nice thin needle and I just insert that through there like so. And that holds the mechanism in place. And then I just find that little hole that has the old talking string and I just pull it out. Obviously this has got some knots on it, so we shall just cut it. Okay, so there's our mechanism. And here's our new string by uh, via Cotswold Collectibles. So it comes with a string <clears throat> that has the pre-colored pull marks. It's a nice reproduction. It also comes with this rivet or eyelet, I guess, to fish through to do your dog tag attachment. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So get this string all straightened out. I like to give it a little bit of a lick on the end to thread it through so I've never done this on camera but I'm going to so bear with me it's just a matter of Getting through the hole, there we go. Oh, fell through, sorry. So I fish the string through and then I take that same clay tool. Then boom, pull it back up through there like so. And just pull that string all the way. There we go. So that's the easy part. Now the hard part, I will tell you, is taking this string and having to thread it through this portion here. So what I like to do is I take the old string I won't do this on camera because this takes a little time. So I take the old string and I put it through the hole, pull that portion out, and then I tie it in an ever so small knot to the end of the new string and just pull this portion back through so it all comes up in there. So when I come back on camera, that'll be done, and then we'll will operate the talking mechanism. So we'll pause the video and come back. All right, welcome back guys. So got the talking mechanism all restrung. We'll go ahead and give her a test run here. There we go. So now, the next thing you want to do is um, go ahead and get it to where we can attach the dog tag. So I got this reproduction dog tag here. And what we'll have to do is trim it down a little bit. Take about half of it off, so, and then we'll attach it using 
the small little whoop, that small little uh, sleeve we'll use a crimping tool and we'll put the dog tag on so we'll come back and we'll have this all attached to the to the torso and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put this guy together so yeah it's going pretty smooth just a really nice quick restoration of this talking marine okay guys welcome back so I went ahead and attached the dog tag using that crimping that little sleeve that crimped it with my crimping tool so cool so yeah so when you do this type of stuff here you, know, you get a lot of questions like how far do you pull the string out it's kind of like for me I've always just done like trial by uh, trial and error uh, I'm sure there's some other people who can speak more truth to this and let you know exactly how to do it but this is just kind of the way I do it um, since it's my figure that's just something to roll with so that wraps up the talking mechanism so we've got everything ready to go with this guy so what we'll do is we'll take our uh, I use a probe tool get it the elastic all ready to go and I like to um, actually let's do that the other way I like to come in from the back here Pull this out a little bit. This is the kind of tricky part with a lot of this type of stuff is getting the elastic back on. So there we go. That's in there. So got the legs together. Just drop our arms in here. Oh, one more thing. So I use um, pads for furniture. For this area here I used to have a pad on these a long time ago so that kind of just keeps everything nice and tight so the recording or the uh, the record stylus can uh, fully press against the the tape this is always the tricky part of these talking guys right if you've done these it's getting them together is the the pain in the butt I've really never figured out a really good method to doing it. But there we go. They went together really well. So we've got uh, our screws. Hold on one second here. All right, got my screwdriver. I was really lucky to find these screws. Okay, so we got this guy here. Let's pop his legs on. So, set the camera up here. Here we go. Our guy is back together. So here's our talking marine. Hoorah, buddy. So, set the camera back down. Let's give him a real quick run on his talker. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, to let you guys know, this is the second time this has ever happened to me. So sometimes I don't get that crimped well enough and it pops loose. So what I'll do is I'll pull this out and uh, I'll tie a knot instead of using that crimping thing. I really don't like the way those Cotswold crimping tools work but, or those crimping sleeves, but oh well, that doesn't really matter. He works. Sometimes you have screw-ups on camera. I never get rid of them. Just let you guys know that I'm human. So we'll pause it and come back and get him fixed. All right, guys, so we're back. 
I got the mishap with the dog tag remedied. I just tied a knot. Good to go. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. But yeah, this is our restored talking marine. We'll uh, hopefully give him another run with his. Sorry about the shamer cakey work. Uh, sh shaky camera work. <laughs> Let's try him out. So yeah, there we go. Pretty sweet. So we'll come back and we'll put some, uh, we'll put an outfit on him. And we'll have a few final thoughts. All right, guys, here he is, our completed talking marine figure. Pretty excited. A um, few things. The old vintage joints. I had to take some Teflon tape and wrap them around the pegs to make them more secure before I put the boots on him. Uh, I'm going to have to go back at some point and adjust the talking string. I took him apart again and realized that I cut off a little too much string, which tends to happen sometimes, especially when you're trying to do it on video. That's no big deal. I'll just fix that at a later date. I looked for some vintage hard hands, but I had a nice pair, uh, later issue ones, but they don't fit very well in the Cotswold arms, so I just left the Kung Fu grip on there. I do have a nice set of Japanese, made in Japan, uh, marine fatigues, and I threw just a vintage belt and 45 on there. So he's done. Uh, I originally, if you read the, uh, the intro, what this video is dedicated to, um, I was going to throw some Marpat camo on this guy. But I went back and forth to kind of a little tribute to the modern Marines. But I just went ahead and just kept in the way he is. I think the intro says enough for how I feel about this. So, yeah. I know he's not all vintage, and I know he's got a little issues, but this is basically how I go about restoring a talking figure. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was the talking mechanism uh, as I mentioned, I had a, a large lot of those, and I cleaned this one up, so I didn't go over how I did it. Um, you can find other videos on YouTube about how to clean these talking mechanisms, so I didn't really go over that, and I apologize if you were wanting that part in this video. Um, but other than that, this is a talker that I can add to my collection of vintage figures. I don't have a lot of vintage figures. I used to, but I got rid of a lot of them because I figured somebody else could use them for their collection. And that's about all, guys. Um, yeah. Can't really say too much else about this. I enjoyed doing this project. It means a lot to me, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, like and subscribe to the page. Hit the notification icon. Share these videos. I look forward to your comments. And uh, until next time, guys, stay safe and cheers.